Urban legends, the dark version similar to a fairy tale, meant to keep us wondering if what we're being told is really out there, or just a good folklore to make us scared. These are some of the few legends that stand out to me and many others. Before I begin, I just want to say if you're new here and enjoy my content, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And also, please check out Emmy's channel as well. Me and her have a collab on her channel diving into cults. Link to her channel will be in the description down below. Teke Teke is an urban legend that originates in Japan, and the story goes that a young schoolgirl had tragically died from falling onto a railway line while a train was approaching and was sliced in half by the train. After the incident, it was believed that she became an onyero, which is a Japanese term for a vengeful spirit that is able to cause harm in the world of the living. It can range from injuring or killing enemies, to causing natural disasters to the world as vengeance for the wrongdoing during the time that they were alive. Which brings me to believe that the girl may have been pushed onto the tracks. Ever since then, it is rumored that her vengeful spirit now lingers the streets of Japan, walking on her hands and missing her bottom half. It is said that if she ever encounters an individual, she will chase them down and slice them in half mimicking her own death. There is no possible way to escape. However, another interesting version of this legend stems from the death of Kashima Reiko, who tragically fell onto the tracks of the Meishin Expressway. Her body was sliced in half by an oncoming train. It is rumored that her legless spirit haunts the bathroom stalls in schools, and if she confronts a victim, she will ask them if they know where her legs are. If Kashima is not happy with the way the victim responds, she will rip their legs off. However, if the victim responds saying that her legs are at the Maishin Expressway, they will survive the encounter. The tale of the black-eyed children has existed since the 1980s, with many reports, sightings, and encounters over the decades. Black-eyed children are said to be paranormal creatures that resemble children from the ages of 6 to 16 who no one really knows where the black-eyed children came from, however have been seen hitchhiking, panhandling people at gas stations, at the doorsteps of residential homes, and even during the state of sleep paralysis. The children don't look intimidating at all, however, they are said to have very pale skin and their eyes are pitch black and lifeless. It's rumored that anyone who's encountered them has felt an overwhelming sense of dread, and during said doorstep encounters, the children would typically knock on the homeowner's door and ask if they could enter the home and use the phone. If you deny them, they will just persist and continue to knock on the door. Many theorists believe the children are actually aliens in disguise due to the pale skin and the black eyes resembling the iconic grey alien image. Others believe that the children are actually demons trying to terrorize people. To this day, many people still claim to encounter the black-eyed children. We have yet to see any proven encounter. Ever heard of a book called The Vanishing Hitchhiker? Even if you haven't, know that this story is based on an urban legend that many people claim to encounter. There are numerous variations to this story, but the most popular to date goes like this. A person is hitchhiking on the road. The driver pulls over and picks them up. Before reaching the designated stop, at some point the driver realizes the hitchhiker is no longer in the back seat. However, there's a note left in the back seat with an address. This note is made to lead the driver to the family of that hitchhiker. The driver arrives at the address and tells the family in the home what had happened. The family then informs the driver that the person they have picked up was deceased for many years. The driver essentially picked up a ghost that seemed completely real and the ghost led the driver to their home. 
With many encounters similar to this over the decades, most people believe that the hitchhikers are just hallucinations or nothing more but fabricated stories, while many others stand by these encounters being completely real. The legend of the existence of witches has been a tale as old as time. We see it every Halloween, whether that be on TV in popular horror films, in Halloween costume stores, or just practically in everyday society as it's pretty much become a staple. The origins of it, however, remain rather unknown and we may never really know where the full concept of the modern day witch came from. But what exactly led to these sort of iconic creatures that we would now come to know as witches? The myth of witches can actually stem back as far as the Babylonian era, where a couple of religion, including paganism, was commonly more practiced out in the open. The first case of witchcraft in of itself came from Alexandria in Egypt, where a young mathematician slash philosopher was executed after being said that she had used witchcraft to entice a Roman prefect by the name of Orestes to kill the leader of a church of what at the time was slowly becoming Christianity. That young woman would be known to us as Tipatia. She was a very intelligent and headstrong woman who believed everyone was welcome to her lectures and was very loved by people of high society as she was quite educated for a woman. She was also a well-known practitioner of paganism which is actually not a evil religion as per se, as many seem to have believed so, but more on that later. This event would spark the beginning of a new urban legend, that being the myth of the evil sorceress. But the myth of the witch really started to become what it is known to us today thanks to the Salem witch trials of the 1690s. Three women were accused of practicing witchcraft in town. One of them being a beggar known as Sarah Good. The other woman was known to have had an affair with a servant. Her name was Sarah Osborne. And the last one, and probably the one who had had it the worst, was an old enslaved woman of color from Barbados. Her name was Tituba. Accused of performing witchcraft on the children of the family who enslaved her, supposedly the young girls who she was taken care of had been performing a fortune-telling ritual where they were to drop an egg in water and the egg whites would basically sh create a shape that would tell them who they would marry. But instead of seeing a random shape, they ended up seeing a coffin. And it's said that supposedly after this event, they immediately started barking, babbling, and crying hysterically. It's also important to note that during that time in puritanical Christian society, fortune telling was actually seen as a grave sin to pretty much everybody, as it was deemed an act of witchcraft and paganism. However, their father, thinking that they were pretty much possessed after this event, started fasting them in order to cure their supposed demon possession. But Tituba would feed them cake, which the father would later become furious at knowing, and he would blame her for the girl's behaviors and basically claim that she had performed some kind of voodoo witchcraft on them that had allowed demons to possess them. Tituba being told to either confess or burn at the stake, she not only agreed but she claimed that the other two women had also committed witchcraft and that they were all a part of a witch coven because she believed that these actions would set them all free but of course even though the people had promised they were still executed this event would spark a massive phenomenon actually very similar to the satanic panic of the 80s as many of the townspeople were pretty religious and they started to believe the idea that a single and usually older woman who lived away from town folk was most likely linked to performing rituals of satanic origins as she had quote unquote signed a deal with the devil and they started associating these women as witches. Oftentimes these women were unmarried, widowers or sometimes even orphans. And they may have had a slight knowledge of nature and the plants around them, though not always the case, but it was attributed to what is known as Swickenism, which is a religion that has oftentimes been linked to witches, but basically the religion in of itself has a lot to do with nature and the environment around. 
these people were outliers to the society as they wouldn't really conform to puritanical Christian society. Soon, more and more people started to claim crazier and crazier things that they'd seen the witches fly, perform evil rituals at night, and not long after came to the idea that witches would float on water as their magic would keep them afloat even if tied down with weights. Obviously a ridiculous idea, but sadly this prompted a test in which a woman being accused of witchcraft had to prove that she would sink in water. This test unfortunately being a lose-lose situation, as if one would somehow manage to float, they would be burned at the stake, and if one would sink, as sadly all of the women did, they would still drown and die either way. But this idea stayed in Salem for a very long time, and stayed to this very day as one of the trials of a witch. It's also important to note that as Christian religion sort of grew and became more and more intolerant of other religions that predated Christianity, paganism and Wiccanism, which were religions of old and mainly had to do with nature, the seasons, and they would all happen in solstices, they pretty much became a token of demon worship to these people as they weren't seen as holy religions but very ancient, outdated, and quite frankly, according to a lot of these Christians people, demonic religions. Even though paganism and Wiccanism had really little to no correlations to any kind of demonic practices. If one was to assume the role of the pagan, that would pretty much just add fuel to the fire as that was pretty much guaranteeing being accused of practicing witchcraft and it would result in an immediate execution. What is your take on these urban legends? Do you believe any of them or are they just scary stories to tell? Or is there a specific urban legend that you believe? If so, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.